You are watching the Movacon HMI Editor Basics self-guided video tutorial series. In this video, we'll build the Jog Zero screen to control Jog and Zero set for each axis. Hi, I'm Matt Pelletier. For this video, I am assuming you've already completed the previous videos in this series. By the end of this section, you'll have this entire Jog Zero screen running with a X axis, Y axis, and Z axis controls. With the servos on, you should be able to jog each axis. There's the X, Y, and Z. Set the velocity, the X cell and the D cell. And when it's at the desired position, set the zero point. You'll see that you cannot set the zero point until the motor stops and set zero OK turns on. Now for a little overview of how this works, you have what's called a tab group and you'll create three more screens for each of the tabs in this tab group. You do need to account for the height of the tab and we're estimating that to be 30 pixels. In my project you see I have new screens for X, Y, and Z and I've created those here. And the original Jog Zero screen has this tab group that's under Objects, Tab Group. You enter that in your screen as you would any other object. You can see it says Shift Double Click, and you see the screens that I've added. Okay. A strategy to build this fast is lay out and verify just one of the axes, let's say the X axis. Then when you know that all works properly, just copy all the objects and paste them on the Y and Z axis screens. But rather than change the properties one by one, it's possible to open the source file, MOVSCR file, and use search and replace to update the variable names for each axis. Would you please at this time open up the mini lab and give it a shot here? As usual, use this mini lab as your guide. Pause the video now and resume to see me run through these steps myself. Welcome back. I'm going to go through the Jog Zero screen mini lab. I do have the control panel and all of the screens. I'll create the tab screen placeholders in the tab group build and verify the x-axis, then you search and replace to create the y and z, and be sure it all works. The tab screen placeholders will start off here with uh, creating this new screen, x-axis, okay. Then I'm going to copy and paste, paste, rename as y-axis, and this one, z-axis, you can right click to apply the new name or I prefer to close the tabs and use edit apply renamed variables. I'm going to save and on to section two, the tab group in the three jog zero screen. Okay, we can get rid of this label and our toolbox objects. We've got the tab group. I'm just going to draw it in here to fill up the entire area and confirm under properties position it is 600 by 380 okay and like it says here shift double click so hold shift double click and i'll add those screens i made here we have x okay we got y okay and z all right now when you add a new screen if you don't see them in here even though you know you created them just hit refresh and that will refresh this list Okay, notice that the name of the tab is the name of the screen. There's really no way to rename the tab. It will be the name of the screen. Now for the properties, we had to look at the dimensions and the font. So let's do Tahoma size 16, we said, and left justified. You know, it doesn't look right here, but you can refresh that with a zoom out and a zoom back in. It's the only thing that's happening here. Looks like I moved that out of place. Okay. There. Now to build and verify the x-axis screen. I'll open that one. And I would like to make this with group boxes. So I'll make one of them here and try to eyeball that in. And then 
add the text jog. I think we were doing number 16 here. Again, you can make that look better with a little zoom out and back in. Copy this and paste. This will be called zero. Looks like maybe that's a little too wide. So let's bring that in a couple notches and reposition. Now for the buttons under round buttons. I'll use that green one again here at the default size. Okay. I'll start with the positive plus. I think that's going to be nice big. Yeah, nice and big there. I wanted plus on the right. So we'll copy and paste that one and it can be minus. Now for the velocity XLD cell toolbox basic shapes We've got text. I will enter VEL. I was using 12 point white. I missed that here. 12 point. Oh, I'm in the wrong one. Here we go. Okay. Velocity. Copy that and paste it a couple times. This one was acceleration. And this one is deceleration. Now for some edit box displays. Here's one. I'll draw that one in here for velocity. Copy and paste that one a couple times. And maybe I want the text of all three of these here to be 12. That looks a little better. I'll move on to the zero side of things here with a blue round button for set zero. That little bigger here too. And then a blue light and a blue LED. Adjust these here. This will be set zero. Okay. And this one will be position valid. Let's select all these. And I think we were going with size 12 and white. Now one little trick here just for formatting. If you see that your text is spilling onto the edge of the object, you can replace the space with a forward slash N for new line. It will not appear as a character. It just makes a new line. And that's got to be done right here in this text area. It can't be done in the properties box. On to part B here, assign the variables to the objects. Here's a list of the variables just to confirm. Looks like a lot of them have the word jog. Valid and set zero. Okay. For jog minus, I'll filter by the word jog. The X axis jog minus request. And the other button, X axis jog plus request. Down in the velocity, we have X jog velocity. Okay. And for XL, we have X jog XL. And for D cell, X jog D cell. Now on to the zeros. Let's look for zero, the X axis. And I'm on set zero request. And down here was set zero. Okay. Make sure you get the right axis here. Set zero. Okay. And this was position valid. So let's look for valid. X axis pause valid. Now let's not skip here. This part properties for the edit box displays. Consider the spin step, min value, max value, engineering unit, and format value. Okay. I'll start with velocity. And these are all under style, I believe. So a minimum value for velocity, I think zero is good for that. And a max value, maybe we need to add a couple, three more zeros to this. Spin step, that's how much it's going to go up and down when I click on these spinners, these arrows. And I think I want it to go up and down by 10. Engineering unit, the unit of velocity in this case is millimeters per second. And the format value, maybe I want to have one decimal point of resolution. Now for XL, I think I'll do XL and D cell the same. So control select both at once. And let me find the style again here. I think XL and D cell will be much higher values. So I'll add one, two, three, four, five, six zeros. And the spin step will be a hundred. So I can crank that up and down a lot faster. Engineering unit is millimeters per second squared. I can't do superscript, but I'll just do it that way. And then the format value, I don't think I care about the decimal point of XLD cell. So I'll do a comma XXX to show the thousands place. The other point here was the buttons should be impulsive with an impulsive time of zero. 
Right. I've got all of these as command type on off. So I'm going to select these buttons, change those here to impulsive, and leave the time at zero. All right, it's time to verify functionality for the x-axis. Let's give it a shot here. I'm going to start from the jog zero screen and run it. All right, I've got everything arranged here to see it all at once on my one little screen. The servos will be on. I've got the x-axis. The y and z still have nothing. Let's set the velocity. You're likely to have a default in here of 180, and that's a fine starting point. So jog forward. There she goes. And jog reverse. Yes, that works. Now, can I increase the velocity with the spinner? Yes, I can, or I could decrease it. I could lower the D cell and raise the acceleration. Seems to work. And notice what's happening with set zero OK. You can really tell if you lower that D cell to 100 or 200. It, set zero is not OK until the motor stops. So I'll try now set zero. And I saw that position go to zero. I can do that again here. Here we go, set zero. And it's at zero. All I have left now is to uh, make the Y and Z axis from this working template. Back to the editor here. So I just need to select everything on the X axis screen. Copy that. Go to Y, paste, and go to Z, and paste. Then save all. One thing to check was to be sure you don't have the zipped project option turned on. We told you not to turn that on before, but just in case you have that setting backwards of our recommendation, you want zipped project off. Otherwise, these files that we're going to replace with search and replace in Notepad will not be legible by Notepad. So now it's time to find the MOVSCR file in Notepad. So from this project, go to the project path and the properties here. I'll double click that. And you go into resources. It's pretty obvious where to go from there. There's not a lot of choices. And here are the screen files. So let's open up the Z axis and use edit, replace, underscore X underscore replaced with underscore Z underscore. Match the case there and replace all. All right, just close that and save. And I'll do the same thing for the Y axis. Edit, replace, and replace X with Y. Replace all, and file save. And that is it. Back in Movicon, it notices this update. So yes, reload. And the other one too, yes, reload. And just to be sure, you can go on the Y axis and you should see the command state variable for each of these has been replaced with a Y. And the same here for the Z axis. And you could just go through and do this one by one on each object like we've been doing so far, but we wanted to show you this trick. Let's test that functionality now for all the axes. The X axis still works. And the Y axis now exists. It jogs, and I can set zero. Okay, that worked. And the Z axis, I can jog the Z, there it goes, and set zero. As far as troubleshooting, just check that max value. If you are entering in a number and it won't take the number, uh, try a number that's below 100, and if it takes that number, it means that you have the max value probably set at the default of 100. Max value doesn't limit the max value displayed, but it does limit the maximum value that you can enter. Other than that, for certification, just be sure every button works, that you've got a decimal point here in the velocity. You should see units here for velocity, X cell, and D cell. The range, meaning the max value, should be reasonable. And that spin amount, also reasonable. All these buttons should be impulsive, including set zero. And you should see the set zero OK turn off whenever you are moving the motors. There are a couple optional pieces here at the end. One is the lamp text color. I'll do that one. There's another one here called optional use an alias to select the axis. And I will refer you to the YouTube demo that shows how to do that if you're interested. All right, so the goal here is that the set zero okay 
should turn black text when the lamp turns on. I'll show that here just for the x-axis. You can copy that set zero OK variable and go down to dynamics under dynamic text edge color. This is similar to one of the optional pieces in a previous video. You just enable that dynamic text edge color. It's the same variable as controls the light itself. And then edit the text edge color so that when it's at a value of zero or false, edit that to be white. Okay. And when the light turns on a value of one, edit that to be black. That way you'll be able to read the text a little bit easier. Okay. Let's try that out here real quick. Now when I jog the X motor, set zero OK is going to turn off. The text is white and zero OK is on. The text is black. This is the end of the Jog Zero Screen Mini Lab. Thank you for watching this video and please go to www.yaskawa.com slash HMI for more information on Yaskawa's HMI products and Movicon HMI Editor.